Oh, wow. This is a really cool effect. Obviously, someone who is very good at design created this. Could I have come up with something this good? Could I even just recreate it? My seven plus years of doing nothing but front end work tells me I should, but my 25 plus years of anxiety is asking me, what if I can't? Okay, the one thing that has helped me in the past to get through big anxieties is to break them down into tiny anxieties and then squash them one at a time. Now, how many little anxiety? Wait, no, no, no. First, what are the big anxieties? Big anxiety number one. There's several elements to this hover effect, and I don't know if I'll be able to make it look as smooth as this one. Big anxiety number two. That click effect is awesome. The way the active cards shrink away in one direction, and then the new cards expand from the opposite side, that seems kind of tricky. All right, let's break down big anxiety number one first. Well, when I hover, I see four big cards and four little cards. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I can put eight divs on the screen, four big ones and four little ones. And I already know I need to contain them somehow, so I'll group them all in another div. It would be helpful to be able to see my cards, so let's make them visible. I need a width, um, aspect ratio of a playing card. Okay, 2.5 by 3.5. Well, whole numbers would be better, so let's go with 5 by 7. Background color, let's go with black, but maybe add some transparency. Wait, wait, hang on a sec. Why is my body background still blindingly white? What is this, a tanning booth? Ah, much better. Switch the cards to white. Okay, now I'm realizing I want the little cards to have some of the same features as the big cards. So let's do a more general class called card and put it on all of them. Move the aspect ratio and background color. I can see the cards are rounded, so let's add a border radius. Now how do I get the cards to stack on top of each other? Let's try changing the position to absolute. Excellent. All the cards should ideally be centered on the screen, so I know I can set the body height to 100% of the viewport and then use grid to place the cards in the center. Wait, hang on. Since the cards are positioned absolutely, they no longer have an effect on the size of their wrapper, so I think it would actually make the most sense if I set the size of the wrapper equal to that of one big card. All right, what's the next little anxiety? How do I stagger these cards? I'm thinking I use a transform to shift the positions and do a wee bit of rotation. Let's start with big card number one. What does negative 5% look like? And maybe a little further, negative 10%. Good enough. I think it's rotated just a bit to three degrees. Oh, wrong direction. Negative three degrees. Too much. Negative one. Eh, why not? Big card number two. I think I should actually skip the translation on this one and just do a rotation. Two degrees? Eh, I'll take it. Number three, transform, rotate. Number four, boopy pop boop. Now for these little guys. I can't tell what rotation they're set to when they're not being hovered, but it does actually look like they might switch from zero rotation when inactive, and then a rotation gets applied on hover. So let's actually try centering them first. Left 50, top 50. Transform, negative 50, looking good. So what about that hover effect? I actually think the first step here should be stacking the cards in the correct order. I'm going to guess from looking at this that it goes little card, big card, little card, big card, so on and so forth. So let's reorder the HTML. The big card rotations definitely seem random when inactive, but on hover they become a uniform arc. So let's start with the first one again. When I hover the card group, big card number one needs to move to the left. 40%? Oh no, I just realized something. The nth child selector isn't selecting the first element with the class big card. It's selecting the first element that's a div, so as is, this won't work. All right, I guess I have to alternate them. Two, four, six, eight. Okay, back to the hover effect for big card one, which is now nth child two. 40%? Not even close. 100%? Too far. 70%? Hey, looks good. Now would be a great time to add a transition time. I'd swear there's a Bezier curve timing function on those suckers. Good thing I'm an expert on those since I found that website for Bezier curves the other day. I'm thinking fast at the start and then slow at the end. Hey, not bad. Add to resume. Now, as for the rotation, why don't I try negative 20 degrees? Okay, the rotation seems close enough, but why doesn't that look quite right? I might have to shift it down a bit too. Okay, one card down, three to go. 
big card two, which is now in the child four. Let's try negative 50% and 5%. And we'll rotate negative 7.5. Big card three, boop, beep, boop. Big card four, bop, boop, beep. Wow, my centering is royally, uh... Okay, I gotta shift all the numbers. Boop, beep, bop, boop, beep, boop, boop, beep, bop, boop. Geez, I swear the littlest things take the longest. Little cards. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and guess that the order is one, two, three, four. Little card one, translate 200%, negative 15%. Wait, why is a negative percentage moving it downwards? Oh, because the initial value is negative 50, negative 50. So let's try 200% and negative 65%, negative 100%. Negative 160, okay. Rotate, negative 15, nice. Little card two, three, four. Why don't I add some images? Unsplash. Dogs, cool. Update the background image properties. Unsplash again. Cats, all right. Jeez, I really flow stated my way through some imposter syndrome there. Maybe I really am cut out for this after all. All right, big anxiety number two. You know, I got to thinking about this some more and this video is really getting too long at this point. So instead of showing you how to implement the buttons, I think there's a greater lesson here. Nah, I'm just messing with you. If I'm gonna add the sweet button swipe feature, I'm really gonna need some extra card groups. So why don't I copy and paste a couple and let's wrap those up in another div. Obviously things are wonky here now, so what I think I need to do is give the outer wrapper the same width and aspect ratio as the big card and card group, and then set the card group's position to absolute. Excellent. Now I have three card groups stacked on top of each other. What next? Let's get some buttons on the screen. How about I wrap everything up in another div and then add a new section for some buttons? We've got a hater button and a lover button. I'm not even going to go look at Fawn Awesome. I'm just going to guess that it's FA-X for the X icon and FA-Heart for a heart icon. Now let's do some styling. Add some top margin to our button section. Align the buttons with display flex. And one of these justify content values has got to work. Uh, space around, maybe? Wow, randomly guessing the past 6,000 times has finally paid off. Okay, gonna crank out these buttons quick. Font size, border, border radius, color, background color, size. Switch the cursor to a pointer. Lover button is blue. Maybe push them a bit closer with some padding. Okay, finally to the interactivity. Hate button sends them left and love button sends them right. I'm gonna wanna know the index of each card group and I'm gonna wanna know which one is currently visible. So let me add some data attributes in my HTML. Index zero, one, two. I'll set the first one as active and I don't know about the other two just yet. So I'll just call them unknown. And then in my CSS, I can scale the unknown ones down to zero. Let's add some click handlers to our buttons. When the love button gets clicked, I essentially need to bump my index up one and change the active group to a status of say after, and the next group needs to become the new active. But I can't just keep incrementing the value, I need it to loop back to zero if it gets too high. So let's say if the active index is still less than the maximum possible index, increment the value, otherwise set it to zero. And so I'll select the current group and the next group, Update the current group status to after and the next group to active and then update my active index after that. Now in my styles, I need a new selector for the after status that will transition out the group that was just active. I'll set a transition time on the card group. And you know what? Let's go ahead and switch the order of the cards in card groups two and three so we get a better idea of what's going on here. Okay, what happens now? Oh, wait, they're only coming from the right side. Hmm, it's almost like I need another status to preempt becoming active so I can control which side the cards are becoming active from. So now, instead of just setting the new group to active, I need to first set it to becoming active from before. And then after a short delay, actually set it to active and update the index. Now in my styles, when the status is becoming active from before, I can move it to the left side so it fades in correctly. And I kind of need this part to happen instantly without the transition time, so 
I'll just set it to none. Okay, let me see if I have this straight in my head. When I click the love button, card group one gets set to after, so it fades out. Card group two, which was defaulted to unknown, gets instantly transported to the becoming active from before position on the left side. After an essentially instant delay, card group two gets set to active, which causes it to fade into the active position. Okay, please work. Wow, that actually looks pretty good. I think the one remaining tweak would be adding a transition delay to the active card. And now I can literally just apply the opposite logic for the hate button, set the current group status to before, the next group status to becoming active from after. Wow, it's like every time I wanna create a pen for a video, I'm so concerned I won't be good enough. But when I break down the big problem into a bunch of smaller problems, the whole thing becomes manageable. I really should remember this for next week. Nah, I'll just stress the hell out again. Good times. Mm -hmm.